No. Hi there, this is the Admin Junior, and this tutorial will be about uh, functions and classes in Python 3.1 within Blender, obviously. I've gone over previously um, object types and things like lists, um, tuples, tuples, that sort of thing. Um, but now I'm going to go one stage further and I'm going to talk about some organization. Yeah, the O word. Um, <laughs> So first of all, I'm going to create a new text file, obviously, and I'm going to turn on syntax highlighting. Now, functions are pretty much one of the most useful things uh, that you can come across in programming, because really they allow you to reuse your code. So everything's a lot faster and a lot simpler to actually write. I'll give you an example. Thinking about adding two numbers together, and I don't mean like doing it in your head, I mean like doing it in binary. You have to convert the numbers to binary. You then have to add the bytes, yeah, add all the bits together, and you have to make sure about the carry. You got to make sure you don't overflow. You know, it, it's it's a big mess. Okay, it's, it's actually very difficult to do an add. It's it's more complicated than you would think. Um, so really, <laughs> thinking about adding. You wouldn't want to have to do all of that, go through all of that hassle every time you wanted to add two numbers together. So what we do is we take the add method, okay, there's all this line of code, and it's basically turned into one function. So it's all grouped under one name. So this line of code can be run as many times as we want, okay. Now the great thing about functions is that not only do they do processes, but they take inputs and outputs. So the inputs are called parameters, and the output is called the return value. And we're going to look at how we uh, specify those in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and create a quick function here. And to follow the convention for tutorials on programming, I'm going to make it the hello world function. And here I'm going to just stop and explain what I've done. The first thing I've used is I've used the define keyword, the def keyword. And it tells Python that what's following is going to be a function. Right, the next thing I do is give it a name. And as you can see, it's highlighted in black. Um, well, the text the text is in black, um, just to show that it's a name. And it's called, and I'm going to call it hello world. The next thing I'm going to do is follow it with brackets. Now these brackets, within these brackets we would specify any inputs. Alright, and we'd specify them by just putting in a variable name. So anything. A, B, C. So in this case we would want, we're asking for three parameters to be passed when the function is run. I don't want any inputs in Hello World, so I'm just going to use, I'm going to leave the brackets empty just like that. You still need them though. Finally, to complete giving the function a name <laughs> and to complete defining the uh, basics of the function, I'm going to specify that what follows is, or the code that follows is all going to be part of the function itself. I'm going to use a colon here to do that. Now if I press enter you'll see that it's automatically indented. Now, all the code, which is one indent from the define keyword here, is considered part of the function by Python. Okay, so all of that is part of the function. As soon as I unindent, okay, all of this code here is not part of the function. And uh, with this colon here, when you press enter, Blender will automatically indent for us. Isn't that nice of it? So, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have too much difficulty remembering that. Because it will automatically do it for you. So, to defining our actual, the, the actual instructions for our function. So, I'm just going to, again, following convention. I'm going to print out the text hello world. 
If you don't know what that instruction means, or any of what I'm talking about right now, you should probably go back and see um, one of my other Python tutorials. Uh, so that's the, this is my function, and I'm just going to finish defining it by uh, unindenting. Right. So to actual, actually run the function, first of all we put its name, and again we're going to follow the name with brackets. Okay. Now within these brackets you would actually pass the parameters that you want to give to it. Now it's not asking for any input here at the moment at all. So again I'm just going to leave the brackets empty. So when I run this, we can see here that Blender is outputting the text "Hello World." Why is this useful? I can't spell. Sorry. Uh, come on. There. So if I run this now, it's outputted hello world a hundred times. So this same function can be run as many times as I want. Okay? And it doesn't require me to type print hello world a hundred times. So that's a very, very, very simple function. The next thing I'm going to do is going to create one which has inputs and has an output. So I'm going to create an add function <laughs> and I'm going to ask for two parameters i1 for integer and i2 for integer 2. Okay, following exactly the same format like that. Okay, now with these parameters the actual values that are passed to the function are assigned to i1 and i2 within the function. So now I can use print result is and then follow that with well actually I'll do result is and then I'll print so I'm going to do i1 plus i2 like that. So this function right now prints result is and then prints the two inputs added together. So that, that's one way of outputting, but that's also the least useful way of outputting, because it outputs to behind Blender, and I mean, you know, what if I wanted to take that result and put it inside another variable? I mean, how could I do that? I'd have to, I don't know, try and read off the uh, command console for Blender. I mean, that, that doesn't work, the console window behind it. So we have another method of outputting. And this is done through the function and only through the function. So I couldn't just put this output in the middle of a script somewhere random. Um, you, you would ha it has to be within a function. And it's called return, and it's specified with the return keyword. Um, and you'll see that again, Blender will automatically unindent for me when I press enter, because return will end the function. Okay, there is a way of returning multiple things without the function actually ending, but that's a lot more complicated. It's called yielding, but uh, again, more complicated, so I'm not going to cover that. But so generally, uh, typically, a function will return one value, or yeah, but of course, this value can be a list or something like that. So in this case, if I were to do add now. I1 and I2, remember, are variables only within the function. So I will pass something like 5 and 10 as integers here. Now 5 and 10 will be assigned within the function to I1 and I2. So it prints, result is, then it'll print 5 plus 10, which is 15, and here it'll output 5 and 5 plus 10, which is 15. Okay. Now we're not going to see that, that last output. If we were to run this, 
result is 15. But that's only one of the outputs. Okay, so where that where's that return value gone? The return value is actually what this line is. Okay, and that's that's not going to make any sense. But if I was to say result equals add 10, 50. Okay, and then if I did print result. And if I run this, first of all, the add method is is called run. Um, so, so what we'll do result is and then ten plus fifty, which is sixty. But it's also returned, okay. And when that's returned, the value of sixty is almost put in place of this function here. So it's as if this function here doesn't exist. It's as if to to Python you just type that okay because what happens is when this line is run first of all add is run add is called and that will go through and print out the stuff and then it returns a value and this value it's this value which is then assigned to result okay so that's what return is all about it gives back a value which can then be used in place of this function. Right. So that's how you use inputs with functions and outputs with functions and how you define them. We're going to move on to classes. Now classes are even more complicated because there are two types of them. There are containers and these are the most simple type and there are also um, templates. But this first type of class is a container. So all it really does is just hold methods and variables up another level. So using the class um, keyword you can create a new class and you can call it my class and inside of this you can create your own variables with their own values easily enough Again, I'm going to create the add method. Like that. Okay? Very simple. And so, we can get things inside of the class just by using its name. So my class, and then using a dot or a period after it to show that we're going up one step in the hierarchy. So my class is within the actual script itself. So we're going to use that. And then dot to show that we're going to use something. That what's coming next is actually inside of my class. And then a. So I've now just accessed the variable a inside of my class. And I can print that like that. And of course I can now I can use the add method in exactly the same way. So all of this is kind of like what we'll be doing up here, but it's just adding another level to it. It's just helping us organize things. And it's this level of organization which is going to help us a lot um, when we actually come to tell Blender what to run and when to run it. Okay, so this is the, this is the only way we really have to think about classes, is just containers for now. Okay, I hope you, um, if not enjoyed, um, learned something from this tutorial, and we're actually going to make use of this very soon in actually making the car move, and when we're using its controls and things like that. Um, so, looking forward to that.